morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast nationwide for uh, Sunday, May 25th, 2025. A massive weather system is headed for southeastern Australia with severe weather expected for South Australia, Victoria, parts of New South Wales and Tasmania in the coming couple of days. And this will be one of the most significant cold fronts that we see this year. This powerful extratropical cyclone is currently situated in the Great Australian Bight or at least just to the south of it and is barreling towards the northeast at this point in time and very serious severe weather is expected to unfold across South Australia and parts of Victoria. All of the details on this system plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into the details this morning. A very intense extratropical cyclone. That's not a tropical cyclone, that's an extratropical cyclone. That's what they are officially to re uh, referred to around the world when they are not a tropical cyclone. With a pressure of 976 millibars, very strong indeed, wrapping itself up very nicely and you can see it here in the bottom left hand side of your screen. The powerful frontal system is extending up in towards the southwest of Western Australia this morning with showers widespread across the southwest uh, coast and into the south coastal region of, uh, around the Esperance area. There's a severe weather warning current for damaging winds across the coastline around South Australia with showers and damaging winds expected to continue to develop there throughout the remainder of this morning and into this afternoon. At Cape Border on Kangaroo Island, winds out of the north at about 40 kilometres an hour now gusting up to about 60 and Cape Willoughby uh, south of Adelaide we're looking at winds that are coming out of the north as well at about 41 kilometres an hour there. Matt Syke, Matt Syke Island rather on the the southern side of uh, Tasmania, we're looking at winds coming out of the north at about 48 kilometres an hour, and we're expecting some much stronger winds there to, or, to materialise around Mount Syker Island in the next couple of days. So let's jump into the forecast with this significant weather system here. There's been quite a lot of information around this system here coming out over the last day or so from the official agency saying that this is going to be one of the strongest and most severe weather systems on record for South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. And whilst this is going to be a very significant weather system, and I'll show you all of the details on that in the next couple of minutes, I think that going to saying that this is going to be a record-breaking cold front is a little bit extreme at this point in time. It's going to be strong, but we're going to see this weather again next year and then the year after. But it certainly could be one of the strongest cold fronts of the year in terms of wind estimates. And uh, the rainfall is a whole other story, and I'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but in terms of these damaging winds, we're expecting damaging and locally destructive wind gusts to begin to develop along the South Australian coastline between Sejuna down through the Air Peninsula, along Kangaroo Island, then through the Spencer Gulf later on this afternoon and into this evening, and then damaging winds developing into the Adelaide metro areas. The main cold front blows through much later tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. From the initial frontal band, we're expecting sustained winds between 60 to 80 kilometres an hour, with peak wind gusts up to about 110 to even 125 kilometres an hour along the exposed coastal regions. Uh, around the coastline and whilst that is significant in itself that's not actually when we're expecting the most significant wind gusts to occur across South Australia. It's going to be through Monday morning when the polar vortex of this low pressure system, the actual meat uh, and uh, grunt of the low pressure system behind the actual front of this system itself comes through early Monday morning and into early Monday afternoon across the Air Peninsula, Kangaroo Island, into the Spencer Gulf and then into the Adelaide region through late Monday morning and into early Monday afternoon. That's when we're going to see the most significant wind gusts out of this system here with wind gusts, like I said, peaking at about 120 to 125 kilometres an hour. Port Lincoln pretty much guaranteed at this point in time to be having sustained winds of about 80 kilometres an hour later on tomorrow afternoon with peak gusts up to 110 kilometres an hour. And that will be a similar story up the coastline through Elliston, Smoky Bay, Streaky Bay, and then as far north as Sejuna. Significant wind gusts up to 90 kilometres an hour also expected through the Air Peninsula and significant wind gusts up to 100, even pushing 110 kilometres an hour through elevated areas through the Flinders Ranges right down to Adelaide can also be expected. Damaging winds expected to develop into the southeast of South Australia through Monday afternoon and into Monday evening, and damaging and locally destructive winds expected along the coastline of Victoria through Monday afternoon and Monday evening. Damaging winds not necessarily expected to develop through Tasmania until about Tuesday. We'll see some very strong winds in the Bass Strait on Tuesday as the wind threat begins to ease off of South Australia, and also some very strong winds expected across the New South Wales High Country and the Victorian High Country as well, with peak wind gusts up to 135 kilometres an hour for some of the uh, much more mountainous elevations above 1700 metres and more regular normal damaging winds above 110 kilometres an hour expected for locations above 1100 metres through Victoria and New South Wales. Tasmania kind of dodges the bullet for this one and the reason for that is because this extra tropical cyclone, the actual cyclone behind it, the low pressure system is really large and it's also really sweeping up from the south so it's not behaving like a regular cold front where you get smashed by those northwesterlies and then those southwesterlies come in and bring all the showers. This is going to be the actual low pressure 
pressure system that goes over Tasmania. So the conditions over Tasmania will be a little bit more tame. There'll certainly still be some severe weather coming through uh, later tonight into early tomorrow morning with some damaging wind gusts expected along the west coast. But they will ease off a little bit through Monday afternoon, actually. And it, all th things considered, it's going to be relatively calm through Monday night and into Tuesday morning uh, in terms of the wind threat there. Waves also a massive threat with this system, uh, that's for sure. And there are, there are actually reports coming out that we could be seeing record, record braving, breaking wave heights across South Australia's coastline through the Air Peninsula and across Kangaroo Island as well. Now, whilst the waves on this system aren't exactly too extreme right now for the coastal regions, they are pushing as high as six or seven metres across the south coastal region of Western Australia, but that's stock standard stuff for this time of the year. Later on tonight into early tomorrow morning, we're going to see these very serious swells and wind waves develop around the South Australian coastline with a pretty extreme wave period as, as well between 12 to 15 seconds, which means these waves are going to hold a lot of energy. So through Sunday morning and into Sunday afternoon, uh, Monday morning and Monday afternoon, when these wave heights really begin to develop and start to exceed eight, nine, even 10 metres along the Kangaroo Island coastline and around the Spencer Gulf and around Port Lincoln, uh, north uh, to Elliston and Streaky Bay, when we see these very significant wave heights begin to develop through Monday morning and Monday afternoon, they're going to pack a big punch and there's going to be a lot of energy moving here into the South Australian coastline. So some significant coastal erosion can be expected, especially for some of the weaker coastline between Victoria Harbour down to Robe and Mount Gambia. There will be some pretty serious erosion down there through the marshes outside of Victoria Harbour. They're just going to be getting a torrent of water moving through those regions as well. So if you do live in an area where you could see flash flooding or uh, some flooding from uh, some significant wave heights moving through, it's probably a good idea to begin preparing for that, sandbagging, etc. Uh, these wave heights are going to be very significant. And like I said, they could be near record breaking for parts of the South Australian coastline. Now, I wanted to leave the rainfall to last because I saw a news report yesterday. I won't name and shame who was writing it. It was one of the big four, uh, but it, it was laughable. They were saying that the rainfall was going to be some of the worst rainfall in history. And unfortunately, the rainfall aspect from this severe weather system is not going to be the severe weather that we kind of need it to be. Rainfall at this point in time, even 100 millimetres coming in 12 hours for South Australia, at Victoria and parts of Tasmania would be very welcome. And unfortunately, what we're now looking at is three-day rainfall accumulations, barely tickling 25 millimetres at this point in time. This is not going to be a significant cold front in terms of rainfall accumulations. There will be some heavier falls around the Air Peninsula outside of Port Lincoln, but again, pushing 20 or 25 millimetres and falls between 40 and 50 millimetres possible for around the Robe and the Mount Gambia area. But for those regions that really need it a lot outside of uh, some of the more uh, agricultural based communities through the Air Peninsula and then towards the east of Adelaide, there's only a couple of millimetres coming through for these regions here. And the rainfall, it, it just needs to be a lot heavier than that, especially at this time of the year. So the rainfall threat coming out of this system really is quite insignificant, that's for sure. There'll be a couple of good drops coming through later tonight into early tomorrow morning for the Air Peninsula as this cold front band really begins to materialise. And then there will be some good showers moving through around mid-morning to mid-afternoon tomorrow for the southeastern corner of South Australia. But apart from that, showers are not going to be too heavy pretty much whatsoever at any point in time. And rainfall accumulations will be seldom above 25 millimetres across South Australia and even into the western half of Victoria, which is really quite sad to see. And a lot of people are really talking about the up the rain threat here. Flooding is not expected and decent rainfall accumulations as well really aren't expected at this point in time, which is quite sad and quite heartbreaking to see for the drought impacted regions around South Australia and into the western half of Victoria. We do have some snow on the forecast as well for the high country through Victoria and New South Wales. Snow expected to fall as down or as far down as about 1,200 metres through Tuesday morning and into Tuesday afternoon. There will be some wet snow as well into some of the more uh, lower peaks of around 1,200 to 1,300 metres, but there will be some proper snowfall accumulations above 1,700 metres around Threadbow and Perisher Valley, and snowfall not expected to extend further north in the Australian Capital Territory by the looks of things. Rainfall then pushing off into the Tasman Sea through Tuesday, and it doesn't look like there's going to be an awful lot coming in behind it by the looks of things, just a bit of cold temperatures, in fact, some very cold temperatures as a high pressure ridge builds into the middle parts of next week. Interesting stuff, certainly a very, very powerful system. I've seen a lot of comments as well confusing this with a tropical cyclone compared to an extra tropical cyclone. By definition, this is a cyclone. All low pressure systems, doesn't matter where they are around the world, are officially designated as a cyclones. Tropical cyclones form in warm waters, extra tropical cyclones form or are the remnants of tropical cyclones that move over cold waters. This here is a full blown extra tropical cyclone, very powerful indeed. And I feel like the tropical, uh, the extra tropical cyclone tag that this system is going to get assigned is very much worth of its strength here. This is a very, very powerful frontal system moving into the southern parts of South Australia. Of course, if you've got any feedback or a disagreement with that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'd be more than happy to explain that to you personally. 
Let's talk about some rainfall that's going to be moving through the northwest of Western Australia. There is a lot of it, especially for this time of the year. It's going to be developing later on tonight, and we're expecting a couple of hundred millimetres to fall here and there, south of Broome through Wallala and Bajangara, and falls as heavy as 100 millimetres also expected outside of Balgo, Kuakara, and Docker River in the Northern Territory side of things. Significant rainfall accumulations this time of the year. A flood watch has been issued for some of the rivers up here. Rainfall isn't developing just yet. There are a few showers streaming in from the Indian Ocean, but you can really begin to see the moisture bands here beginning to develop, making the most of some very warm waters offshore from northwest and western Australia and a very moist environment coming down off Indonesia as well. So we're expecting plenty more showers, plenty more thunderstorms and plenty more rainfall to develop later on today with heavy force expected to develop from later on tonight. And like I said, some very heavy rainfall accumulations can be expected. So let's talk about those in a bit of greater detail at this point in time. Heavy rainfall beginning to develop along the west Australian coastline through tomorrow morning. That's going to extend a little bit further north up to Broome and through Derby and some of the surrounding regions through Monday afternoon and into Monday evening and moderate falls expected inland towards Fitzroy crossing Balgo and Kuakara through Tuesday morning extending into Tuesday afternoon and evening before the moderate rainfall takes hold into the Northern Territory from Tuesday and into Wednesday. Rainfall moving through the Northern Territory across Wednesday and then into southwestern Queensland through Wednesday night and into Thursday morning with light to moderate falls possible through southwestern Queensland. Not expecting anything too significant though major forecast model is suggesting that this moisture will persist through Thursday and into Friday with falls potentially as heavy as 50 millimetres or so across south, uh, southwestern and south central Queensland through Thursday and Friday. There's really not an awful lot to talk about with this weather system here. It's unseasonable, sure, but the weather system does have, or this type of weather system does happen pretty much every single year where we do see mid-level moisture streaming in from the Indian Ocean. It just normally gets itself caught up with cold fronts around the Murchison or the Gascoyne region. So this one is unseasonably further north, but in terms of rainfall accumulations, we're not expecting this to impact a whole load of people. Broome could see 80 millimetres out of it. Wallala and Bajangara likely to be the wettest of locations with up to 150 millimetres. Rainfall will be light at Port Hedland, Marble Bar and Telfer. Rainfall accumulations outside of Fitzroy Crossing could be up to about 40 or 50 millimetres, and then a couple of hundred millimetres is possible around Balgo or Kuakara. But again, we're talking about towns with populations in the dozens, not even the hundreds, but the dozens at this point in time. Rainfall accumula accumulations rather will be respectable through the Northern Territory with falls up to 100 millimetres outside of Kintor and Docker River. Falls outside of Kings Canyon could be up to about 40 or 50 millimetres as well, with about 20 millimetres expected as far south as Ayers Rock. Alice Springs could pick up 50 millimetres and Creek could pick up about 25 millimetres of rainfall. Into southwestern Queensland, falls will be very hit and miss between 5 to 25 millimetres for locations. Further flooding is not anticipated, however, and then rainfall accumulations into the more central regions of Queensland could be slightly heavier when the, uh, the, when the moisture streaming across the nation meet, meet, meets up with moisture coming in from the Coral Sea. We could be seeing rainfall accumulations there into the triple figures once again, but that's looking much later on into next week. And just before I wrap this video up into the southwest of Western Australia, some heavy rain overnight. We've picked up about 25 millimetres across the past 24 hours in my personal weather station rain gauge with some more showers streaming up from the south this morning. And because this cold front is very powerful moving down into the Great Australian Bight, showers will be pretty frequent throughout the remainder of today and into this afternoon. Expecting some heavier falls across the south coastal regions moving into the Esperance region and then further towards the east as the cold front sweeps through there. But for the most part, rainfall accumulation is not being problematic. It's just this pesky, drizzly stuff stuff moving through the Perth metro area at this point in time and in terms of wind speeds as well. Not really a concern. This is definitely not severe weather that we're seeing, but it is certainly some rainfall, some wintry weather. And again, I, I knew it. Well, as soon as this winter weather approached Perth, we were desperate for this winter weather. But as soon as it got into the Perth metro area, everybody would be whinging and everybody indeed is whinging. I did not want it to be as cold as it was last night uh, and I would love someone to return, but that's not going to happen for another couple of months at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations looking healthy into the back end of May and into the first couple of days of June. In fact, we could see some really significant rainfall accumulations through the southwest of Western Australia with some strong cold front activity developing from Friday the 30th of May into the Sunday the 31st of May and then into the first couple of days of June, a powerful cold front expected to move through Sunday and into Monday and with showers and storms just piling into the southwest corner of Western Australia through the first couple of days of June, we could see some relatively significant rainfall accumulations materialising out of it. But at this point in time, it is still a little a little bit too long range to kind of make a final call on how much rainfall is expected, but I would not be surprised if we saw 100 mil falling across the parts of the southwest of Western Australia, especially into the hills outside of Perth between the 30th of May out to about the 5th or the 6th of June during that week long period just mentioned. But again, still going to have to wait and see what's expected there. In terms of other decent falls happening around South Australia, Victoria, and into Tasmania, I mean, we've got more rainfall developing up in northwest and Western Australia, but that's not really being reciprocated on other forecast models at this point in time. Uh, we will have to wait and 
see what the rainfall situation does end up developing out of this. But again, we will just wait and see. There's not an awful lot that we can comment on in the later uh, in the later parts of the forecast period. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. I do hope you've enjoyed watching my face mob around in the bottom part of your screen as well. I'm thinking of making this a bit of a, a frequent addition to the videos as well. So let me know if that's something that you'd want to see uh, in the comment section down below. Any feedback or suggestions, always welcome here on the Cyclops Oz channel. But that is going to be all for me today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.